What have I told you? You could get in on an action camera with all the accessories you need to take it diving for under $100. Would you be interested? Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. Previously, we've done a lot of stuff all about underwater photography and videography. Who wouldn't want to capture these kinds of images and take that kind of video underwater? But it can be kind of an expensive part of the sport. By the time you've bought all your other scuba gear, do you have enough money left over to buy a really good camera? Nowadays, with action cameras, just like I showed you the DJI Osmo Action, I do love this camera. It does some great things underwater, but it's about $400 plus when you purchase the camera and all the stuff to go with. With it. In this episode, we are going to show you a 4K 60 frame per second ultra high definition camera that you can purchase with all of the accessories for less than $100. We were approached by a company called Ape Man. They produce a series of action cameras and they asked us if we would test this out in its underwater housing and give our opinion. They are not paying for this. They gave us this camera to use underwater. We're not sponsored by them. We're going to tell you the unadulterated truth of what we think of this camera. So first, Let's take a look and see what do you get when you actually purchase a camera for less than $100. What comes with it? Let's take a look. This is the A87 action camera made by Ape Man. It's a 4K 60 frame per second high definition camera and it can be placed inside an underwater housing so you can take it diving with you. Um, the camera itself comes in this nice uh, firm container. All the accessories are in here too. We'll open that in just a second. But in addition to that, Ape Man provided us a couple of other things. They gave us a positively buoyant floaty handle. You can attach your underwater housing directly to the handle here, much like a GoPro mount. In addition, they gave us three different filters. This is just a neutral density filter. There is a magenta filter. So if you're using this in green water, it will help to color correct in that environment. And then lastly, there is a red filter and reds and oranges are um, one of the first colors that we're gonna lose in that first 30 feet. So using a red filter, we can help to replace this. As we open it up, one of the things that I was kind of amazed about this was there's so much stuff in here for less than $100 when you purchase the entire setups. First off, we've got the camera, which is already in the underwater housing, and we'll, we'll mess with that in just a little bit. We'll show you how it works. Um, the battery, the first battery is already in the camera. And then they also give you a second battery. They say that you're gonna get about 60 minutes of battery time shooting at 4K. We have a remote control, which is gonna be pretty much useless to us underwater. And then there's pretty much every type of uh, attachment and mount that you can think of. You wanna put this on your bicycle, put it on your windshield. There is a user manual and a warranty card. And then the camera and battery, the battery has to be charged inside the camera and it has a mini USB uh, attachment to uh, plug in and charge the batteries. To release the camera from the housing, there's a little slide here that opens a latch. You can then release it and open the housing and pop the camera out of there. When out of the casing, you can see that compared to the DJI Osmo, very similar in size, but in weight, uh, the DJI Osmo, a $300 camera, uh, has an aluminum body. It's definitely got a little bit more heft and weight. A power or mode button on the front. So when we turn it on, we're going to hear it chirp. And on the back side, we now have a touch uh, screen. We can change between video and photo functions. And within the video function, we can then choose which type of video function we have. Like I said, this will shoot in 4K. We then have the option to choose different formats if we want to shoot in 2.7 or 1080, and then we can adjust the frame rate also. With the slow motion mode, we can step into 720p or 1080p. 1080p will shoot at 120 frames per second. 720p will shoot at an amazing 240 frames per second. Also within the single frame photographs, it'll shoot up to a 20 megapixel picture, or you can have other uh, options that are less than that. So when placing this in the housing, we wanna make sure that the lens itself is pointing through this circular portion. It is actually possible to mount this the, the wrong way. And then it has a single O-ring large seal. We're gonna close that. And then over the top, we'll take our little latch and it snaps in place. To use this underwater, the front power button is going to be the same. So we're gonna push and hold that button. We'll hear it turn on and now we're in the video function. If we wanna to switch to the photo function, just a short push and it'll flop 
between the video and photo functionality. So for the filter that we're going to use, the red filter, it just snaps onto the front of the housing, that square housing. It has a little extension that comes down and when we insert it onto the stick that we're gonna hold onto it with, that will secure the filter also. So let's go take this thing underwater and see what it does. All of these images above water, we're using the Ape Man and you can see it has nice clarity, good color. At about 25 to 30 feet deep, as we lose the reds and oranges, suddenly this has a really nice green tint to it. Still has good detail, but very green. This lizard fish looks like he's the king of disguise here. Since everything is green, he just blends in with the bottom. So my underwater cameraman, Jeff with Triton's Realm, who was using a DC-2000 with video lights, discovered this little guy. This is a baby drumfish. How cute is it? So a very green diver passes over another very green, uninteresting reef. Let's see if we can do something about that. Let's magically add back some color to this. As you can see, by doing some post-production color correction, we're able to make this a much more interesting image. This large barrel sponge looks very green. Again, let's work some magic on it. And now you can see, color corrected, a much more interesting image, much warmer. We brought back the reds and the oranges. And again, the camera shows good 4K detail. Towards the end of our dive, in the middle of Cane Bay, we came across this. This is one of the coral nurseries where they're regrowing staghorn coral. And again, it looks very green. Let's make it look better. Much warmer, much more inviting to look at. And again, check out the detail as we get up close. Our last task was to check out the filter system. Easy to take on and off. We got down to about 75 feet and with the red filter on, it looked horrible. Couldn't see anything out of there until I discovered this. You have to be at least as smart as the system you're using to be able to use it properly. So what are some of our thoughts on the A87 Ape Man and underwater housing? Well, the underwater housing uh, depth rated to about 130 feet, so no problems as a recreational diver. It was easy to use. It remained waterproof, probably one of the most important parts of the housing. Do not kill the camera inside of it. The floaty handle, I'm not sure that I was that big of a fan of the floaty handle because it was attached to my BC. It would float up and around me. Uh, it just became annoying during the dive. If you're a snorkeler using this, I could definitely see that this would be useful. If you were to drop it, it's going to float at the surface. With the filter system itself, well, I'm an idiot. I forgot to remove the little plastic backing from the backside of the uh, filter. So we didn't get good images while we we're using that, but we're gonna test this out again in the future. I'll tell you more about that in a bit. And now on to the camera itself. Well, very light, very easily transportable, uh, user-friendly. I found that I could use this and figure it out pretty easily, but you lose that touchscreen capability underwater. Underwater, easy to switch between the photo and video modes. Again, though, I had difficulty trying to figure out could I actually change if I was set into a 4K 60 frame per second? Could I change the quality of that video? and it seems that I can't do that. From a video quality perspective, the camera itself seems to struggle, particularly in low light situations or in high contrast situations. If we have a bright area of sunlight on white sand and a, a greenish reef beside, the camera seemed to struggle a little bit in terms of trying to give you a good image there. Color correction, I showed you on the video that 
I had to do some post-production color correction for the video to look good for me. There are a variety of different white balance settings inside this camera. There is none for an underwater setting, however. Some novice underwater photographers, maybe that's a little bit more work than you're looking to do. And so one of the things that might be nice for uh, Ape Man to look into is to build in some underwater color correction into the software of this so that we could set that up prior to getting in for our dive. So could we recommend this overall? For experienced underwater photographers and videographers, no, this is not for you. You're not gonna be happy with the video and photo quality results that this gives you and also a little bit of work afterwards to get some good color correction. If you're a new diver, new underwater photographer, videographer, just getting into that realm, just wanna have a way to document your underwater experiences you aren't super concerned with white balancing and color correction, you just wanna have a way to document your dive, then yeah, for the price point, less than $100 for this camera and all the accessories that go with it, that certainly might be of interest to you. But speaking of novice underwater photographers and new divers, we're actually gonna take this out and test it again. We're gonna give it a little bit more time underwater, except this time, I'm gonna put it in the hands of a newish diver. My brother-in-law, he doesn't know this, Bob, um, we're gonna give him this camera and let him use it. Number one, I wanna see from an ease of use perspective, can he use it, can he obtain images, what does he think of those images? Number two, as we've talked about previously in underwater photography technique, when we put a camera into your hands, it changes the whole environment as a diver. You have to have great buoyancy, you have to have good trim, good control of yourself underwater, and so it'll be interesting to see what happens when he suddenly has to concentrate on aiming this, keeping it in focus, but also making sure that he continues to dive appropriately. If you check our description down below, Ape Man has given us some links that you guys can go check out this system. Uh, as I said, there's some pluses and minuses to this, so take that into account when you're thinking about using this for underwater photography. Now, click the link down below me. Go check out the NYX camera system that we tested on St. Croix that uh, didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to. In fact, it made me very sad. Check it out. <music>